Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. It's 10 o'clock p.m. here in Calgary, Alberta, um, Saturday, April 6th, and I'm glad to be here. And haven't been doing uh, too many shows lately except for my uh, biblical counseling information in the morning, uh, actually in the evenings now, but I was doing it in the mornings. But I've had to uh, actually missed a couple of my shows just because I couldn't get into my chat room or into my studio. And um, so, yeah, it's been pretty sporadic, but I appreciate everybody who's taking the time to listen to my shows. There are people that are listening, and I really appreciate it because I know I don't have much time to to listen to lots of shows on Blog Talk Radio like I used to, and I don't even have time to participate very much anymore. It's uh, My time's pretty limited, but this issue just sits so heavy on my heart. I just keep doing these shows. You know, it's all the same old thing. It's really the same old show, the same old discussion, you know. Um, it's uh, a horrific fact, you know, that children are continually dying, and if they're not dying, they're in the hospital due to abuse-related injuries, and that's even if the abuse is um, discovered and the child actually gets help, you know, of, of some sort. And many times, or I'd like probably think just by the studies that are done by, you know, federal studies and whatnot, that most of those children, um, most of the abuse actually just goes unchecked. And so, you know, kids, I mean, and this is just in North America. I mean, if you think about worldwide, it's really ridiculous. Like when you put the whole picture, the whole world in, into, the situ, into this dilemma, it makes it just that much more discouraging. And it's not a, uh, it's not even by any means a hopeful message, you know, because <laughs> I don't think we've made that many strides in the whole issue, you know. I mean, like um, going back to even like 1960 when when child abuse, you know, organizations and governmental organizations first started to make a move to try to help families that were in trouble and abusing children, um, you know, not much progress really has been made since then, but lots, billions of dollars are pumped into the system every year, billions and billions every year, um, but nothing much is done, and this is really discouraging. And people say, well, what would you do with the children anyway, like once you pull them out of these homes, these abusive homes? Well, yeah, that's a really good question, because then a lot of them end up going into foster care or other situations, institutionalized or whatever, and then they're abused uh, even even further by other people. Right? So it's it's a really discouraging situation out there for these young people, and you can't sugarcoat it. You can't. You can't even. I mean, there's there's people out there that are doing, you know, to talk about child abuse issues and child abuse prevention and stuff that like to then turn the discussion to what they made for supper and what color they're painting their nails. And it, it, to me, that's just it doesn't make any sense. You know, this is not a fun topic. It's not even remotely interesting. But what it is is it's. It's completely necessary. <laughs> if we're going to save children's lives, we need to be serious about it. It's this is not funny. Um, this children are dying, like as we as we sit here tonight in our homes or wherever we're at, and there's nothing we can do about it because no one will step in, no one will intervene for those children. Even if somebody knows about it, they're not they're not doing the right thing. They're not making a phone call to the police first of all to report it as a crime and get that child some help. Or those children, and then uh, and then reporting it to the uh, to the other authorities, but the police first because they are they need to report it as a crime. Child abuse is a crime. It is punishable by the law, and it's against the law to abuse a child. And most people just like to neatly package it away and tuck it away as uh, discipline. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, it's just discipline. You know, it's like oh, right, okay, that's a uh, very uneducated. Um, um, uh, opinion, I guess, by a lot of people who really don't understand the difference between discipline and abuse, right? There's a large, big difference between discipline and abuse, and people say, well, there's a fine line. Um, no, there is no fine line. You either are hurting that child or you're not, and you're either damaging that child or you're not, and it's a it's a, it's a a cavern of difference, you know. There's, there is a difference between discipline and abuse, and most people like to think that abuse falls into the category of discipline. So that if a person breaks their child ar- their child's arm or, or uh, batters their child to death, oh, well, uh, they were just disciplining their child and got carried away. It's like, you know, no. <laughs> you 
there's a huge difference between abuse and discipline and people don't don't know because they don't study and they don't get the facts. So it's quite discouraging that most of the world likes to think that abused children are actually just disciplined and that the world's crying out against discipline. And that's wrong. You know, children do need discipline and they do need correction. They need um to they need good solid teaching, you know, to help them to grow up to be responsible um sociable, you know, um, well-being, you know, in intact um, adults, you know. They do need direction and they need counsel. They need help from their parents and, and everybody else around them, you know, to help them to grow up to be mature, responsible adults. <laughs> but there's a big, that's what I said, there's a big difference between abuse and discipline. And so it's a, it's a huge gamut of, of a problem. Like when you think about it, and it's been you know going on since time began, and I just think it's really bizarre that people lump uh, children and youth who are being abused into the category of discipline. Um, it, it's just bizarre. It's it, it's it's. I think it's just so that it's it's a it's a a way of not having to deal with it. Because if we all think, you know, if 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 the if culture thinks and the world thinks and our society society here today thinks that that abuse is discipline, then they don't have to do anything about it. Yay! We can all just go on our merry way. We don't have to feel bad about that. We don't even have to think about it. No. And then when the pictures come over, come come out and of police and, and police reports are made and the newspapers pick up on it and reporters go out and report uh children being killed or maimed or removed from homes who have been horrifically abused the world sits there and just kind of goes, oh, oh okay, we'll just tuck that away because we don't want to know about that. Well, I didn't want to know about it either, and that's why I decided to speak out publicly about this because my situation is, is uh, I, I mean, I survived. But the thing is, is that other children won't. And the sad thing is, is that nobody cares about abused children, you know? I mean, their families obviously don't care. I can't think of uh, a situation where somebody would abuse their child and actually care about them. It's obvious that abusers don't care for their children, and many families that are so dysfunctional like mine was, nobody's going to care about those children, you know, and so who cares, you know? It's like that's what the world says, who cares? I'm off to go do my thing and have my fun, and that bothers me. It really bothers me that because I speak out against all human rights abuses, and that includes men, women, children, abuse against anybody, the elderly, the the, the vulnerable, you know, the, any, just anybody. I just don't think it's right. I think it's wrong. And I thought, hey, I got a voice. I can speak up about this, you know, and I don't have to carry this burden and this 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 pain by myself anymore, and, and I can release it and let the world know that, hey, you know what, it's happening, and it's happening right next door to you, and what are we going to do about it? It's really discouraging. I know because it, it just it, it just does. It happens on our on our city blocks. It happens in our towns, in our communities, in our cities everywhere around the world. And yet, somebody who had the opportunity to look in on that child or those children, and they didn't do anything about it. Where's the level of of responsibility and, and really? Uh, how is a person going to feel about that afterwards after they know that a child's been abused and or been killed, possibly murdered at the hands of, of an abuser, whoever it was, that they could have got that child some help? And then I don't understand how they can even sleep at night <laughs> you know, to know that a child's being abused and just not even care. You know, that's the sad part because so many, so many are in that position, you know, and there's a lot of people out there like that who you know, within families who, because the family is so dysfunctional and they have grown up so so uh, abused and messed up that they don't, they think that's life. That's what happened with my family. We just figured, well, that's life. That's the way it is. That's the way we deal, you know. And it's wrong. It's incredibly wrong. Um, neighbors will turn a blind eye, you know. Neighbors don't want to get involved and they don't want to ruin their relationship that they have with the uh, adult abuser, right, whoever it is. And if it's another child abusing, then, you know, and, they, and a neighbor knows about it, maybe they don't want to get involved, you know, because it's like, oh, well, that's their business, not mine, or out of fear, you know, retribution or whatever. 
but it's just wrong. And I just think that, you know, everybody who's got a set of lungs and a set of of lips and a mouth who can speak out should be speaking out against child abuse, really, and all abuse, really. I mean, it just makes sense, but especially child abuse. And you know why? Because children cannot protect themselves. Children have no capability of protecting themselves. And children growing up in an abused, dysfunctional situation like myself won't even think of getting help because that's all they know. That's all they've ever known. So they don't think there's a reason that they should make a phone call. <laughs> because that's just the way life is, you know, From when you're born into it and you live through and you keep living through these horrific episodes um, and nobody does anything about it. It's just the way life is. And so children can't, can't necessarily, even older children, can't get help for themselves. And so it's important that the world is watching. The world should be watching. And people say, well, it's none of our business. No, it is, because there's a child dying every, what is it, every five seconds or something like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous that people should think that they should be allowed to bring a child into the world and then abuse it. No, it's wrong. It's not okay. There's lots of people out there that say it is okay and that it's a parental right for that a parent should be allowed to do whatever they want to their child, uh, including up to death, and that no one should have anything to say about it. And you know what? It's wrong. It's always going to be wrong. It's never going to be right. And I don't care what anybody's opinion is on that because I know that the court of law agrees with me. It's not the parental right to abuse a child because you have to define what abuse is. You know, parents, they do need to discipline their children. They need to, they need to really, I like to look at it more like um, correction, not not so much discipline, but just correction. You know, it's like they need to train, to train and to bring up their children properly, but so many parents aren't. They think they are, but they're not. And they end up with monster children that the world can't even contain you know, or constrain, that's no good. That's also actually a form of abuse, if you look it up. And um, so, yeah, there's a, there is, there's a proper way to do things. There's a proper way to deal with things, and it is not abusing children. And so it's uh, frustrating. It's absolutely frustrating because the world looks on and doesn't do anything. And I, I know myself, like I know if I, I, I'm just naturally drawn to be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. So I'm not even around children because I work in, a, in, a, in an adult situation. I live around a whole bunch of adults. I don't even see children. I mean, I rarely see a child. Once in a while I see a, a, a mother and, and a child in a, with a stroller or something. But I'm still looking. You know? <laughs> Like, does that child look like they need they're, that they're being abused? Do they look okay? You know what I mean? It's like I'm always looking, and that's because I was abused. So I, my, I'm just automatically looking to see the welfare of the child. Most people don't care. See a child running down the street half naked, you know, out there minus 30 degrees, and they don't even think about it. You know, it's like, we don't, we don't, that's, not, that's not normal. <laughs> no child should be running down the street half naked minus 30 degree weather. You know, it's like something's wrong. Hello, you know, um, it's it's just not good. It's not good. And there's so many people in the world. I mean, to be honest with you, people say, "Well, it's not my problem," and I disagree. I think it's the world's problem, and maybe I'm I'm just overzealous or something. You know what I mean? Like, I just think that it is our problem, our global problem. It's each generation's problem every time each generation rolls up. And when is it going to, which generation is it going to be that actually says enough, you know? Let's, uh, I'm going to put some time into this. I'm going to dedicate a little bit of time here and there, a little bit of uh, get the information, get the facts, and learn how to protect children that are around you, you know? That's really important. If everybody would do that, we'd cut down a lot of abuse because there are lots of people out there with children, <clears throat> you know? And there's lots of, there's tons of people out there having kids, right? And so there's people that know people that have children, and in that cer- certain circumstance, they're going to run into teachers and, and uh, after-school activities. They're going to run into stuff like that where, you know, if you know the facts, you can protect your child or somebody else's child. But if you don't know the facts and you don't get the information on how to protect children, yeah, it's just, you're just not even going to think about it because it's not a safe world. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> it's not a safe world. 
it's really funny. Like most people don't realize the bizarre stuff that I've been through, the really bizarre stuff that really, that's why I say it's not a safe world because it's really not. Because I was almost kidnapped like five times before the age of 10 by strangers because nobody was looking out for me because I was abused. Who was looking out for me? Nobody. So, you know, this tiny little blonde girl out by herself running around, you know. I mean, I was very, very lucky to get away from these would-be kidnappers. I actually had two people um, intervene and make sure that I was not kidnapped, taken away, killed or sexually abused or whatever. Absolutely crazy. This is not a safe world. You think your children are safe out there? If you've got children, you can think again. I, I've, I've I run across people that have said, oh, it's not that bad. It's like, okay, well, maybe you haven't had some of these horrible things happen to you. Well, that's great. I'm happy to hear that, man. But don't close your eyes and don't be in a dream world with rose-colored glasses either just because you haven't had those things done to you because it is not a safe world. It's not a, it's not a safe place. This is not a good place for children. And you you need to make sure your children are safe at all times. I mean, now we were just so lucky a lot of times, me and even my friends that I was growing up with, my teenage friends, that we young, we were young teens and we were out thinking we were so cool because we were we were survivors. Hey, we were survivors. We were cool. You know, we could handle just about anything. I mean, coming from the homes that we came from, we thought we were pretty cool. And so we'd be out there messing with people who were really bad people just like our families, but actually a little bit worse, criminal criminal element, you know what I mean? And we were very lucky, extremely lucky that that nothing happened to us. You know, and people think it's a safe world. I can tell you some I can tell you differently. You know? And it's it's you have to protect your child. You don't even have a choice. You think the neighbor is safe, you better think again. You think that you, the person you have babysitting your child is okay? You better think again. You even think maybe your teacher, your child's teacher is okay? The teacher of your children? You better think again. And I'm not running down the school system or the neighbors or anybody else. I'm saying that anybody who has contact with a child should have should be screened and double screened for uh, past offenses. You need to have a criminal background check done. And you can do that on your teacher, on your neighbor. I mean, you can you can have a criminal background check run on, on everybody who's going to come in contact with your child. You know what? I know if I had a child, I would do that. You know why? Because one out of three to four girls and one out of, let's say, five to six boys, even though the stats change all the time, they get worse and worse as each day goes on. Um, are being abused sexually under the age of 18 in some way. So whether it's, you know, unwanted sexual touching to uh, molestation to rape to whatever, it's happening. And you don't want your child to be a victim. You really don't. And people think that that, that these people who are around their children, whoever it may be, I mean, I'm not pointing fingers at any one group. There's just everywhere. They're everywhere. They're waiting in stores for you to take your eyes off your children long enough so that they can rape them in the next aisle over. That's ha- that happened. I don't know why people didn't see that article that came out that was that they actually had video of it, and the video was posted of a man who took a little kid out of a grocery cart when the grandmother was not looking, took took the kid to the next aisle and tried to rape the child right there in the store. The video cameras captured it. And thank God they got that child before anything happened. But this is how sick and perverse and twisted this world is. That's it right there. It's sick, it's perverse, it's twisted. And for all those people out there sitting around with rose-colored glasses, you are setting yourself up and your children and your family up for a whole lot of problems. It's sad. I mean, it's really sad that people have to go to such great lengths that you can't even trust your neighbor. You really can't. They they might look friendly, they might look intelligent, they might even be a pastor, a preacher, they might be some person in the church, you know, who's just so well looked up to. They could be, and hey, I'm not running down the church either, I'm a big time Christian. But I'm saying, they're everywhere. You cannot trust anybody with your child, you really can't. You need to know who is around your children. 
you need to know who they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even family members, those ones you really can't trust, to be honest with you. 90, what is it, 95 or 98, 99% or whatever it is. No, I think it's 95 or 96, something like that. It's really high anyway. The numbers are really high. <laughs> and this is the sad, perverse situation, is that 90 to 95% of all child sexual abuse is perpetrated by a family member. Get it straight. That's a fact. That's reality. You cannot even trust your family. And people say, well, they're the least you can trust. You should be able to trust your friends. No, you can't trust your friends either. <laughs> you can't because people are sick and twisted and they do horrible things and they think they should be allowed to do it. There's whole groups lobbying the government so for, for uh, adult child sexual relations. There's groups lobbying to try to get this legalized, right? I mean, there's a lot of sick people out there. And, you know, here's a great website. Go to the FBI.gov website, FBI.gov. And check out their information on the child sexual predators and child sexual abuse uh, prevention, right? If you want to get some really good info and some really interesting stats on just how many child sexual predators there are out there, go to the FBI.gov website. That's a great website full of wonderful information about people getting busted all over the place, really all over the world, but all over you know, the U.S. and everywhere who are getting busted by the hundreds uh and and uh, pers- and prosecutors but the thing is is behind every time they bust one 600 more pop up 600 i'm not kidding you these are the people sitting in your office these are the people driving down the street in, next to you in their cars and they look fine oh they look just fine but they're sexually uh screwed up they like to they like to have sexual relationships with children there's something wrong with that Parents are, I want people to know this because people don't know these things. Parents do things like that with their children and they videotape it. They will sexually abuse a child, they will videotape it, and then they will put it on the web. Parents are guilty of this Um, and not just single parents. There are other, like, two, you know, parents. It's not just only single parents who do these things. It's like, you know, it, it can happen. And it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I don't see how anybody in their right mind could think that that's okay. But that's how screwed up our society is. And that's why I choose to speak out against this stuff. That's why I'm just like one more voice out here um, saying, you know what? No, it's wrong. It's wrong. It will always be wrong. And when are we going to wake up and do something about it? You know? Like, when are we going to wake up? It's really, it's a a horrible situation. It's an absolutely horrible situation. You know, I mean, I just, and I don't even have children. But I don't do this because I don't have children. I do this because I was abused and I know what what these kids out here are going through. But I made it. I survived. You know, and for years I was really pissed off about that. Because I was hoping that they would just kill me and get it over with. But it didn't happen. So it took me a long time to actually find any joy about being alive. Well, I made it. I survived. And I thought about it. I thought, you know, those poor little kids that get their heads bashed in and they're getting killed and murdered all the time, found in garbage bags, stuffed down in the bottoms of muddy rivers and stuff like that. They find these little kids. I sit there and I think, which one of those little kids wouldn't trade places with me right now to have the opportunity to say, you know what, I made it. So I finally stopped, stopped thinking like that, you know out of respect and dignity for these children out here who they're finding stuffed in these garbage bags. You know, this just makes me sick. And it's not pleasing. It's not a funny subject. It's not interesting like all this other garbage that's out there that everybody's interested in. It's reality. It is what it is. It's reality. And nobody wants to know about it because they all want to live in their little unreal little reality show world, which is weird because reality shows have nothing to do with reality. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of like the world is just not paying attention. Hello. But it's, I mean, it's sad. It really is. What I think we need is stiffer penalties. Seriously, stiffer stiffer penalties. What I think they should do is um, capital punishment. You know, you do you do the crime, you know, if, you, if the, you, you, you kill a child, you should die. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way it is. You know why? 
Because it wouldn't take long, maybe about 10 years, before people would start waking up to the fact that, wow, so many adults are dying. Gee, I wonder why they're getting, they're all getting put, they're all getting gassed, you know what I mean, or whatever. Well, it's because they've killed a child on purpose, without a doubt. Proven, right? Uh, It's really pathetic. You know, people will kill their children and then within a few years of doing a few years of jail time, will go out and have more children and kill those children. Check your Check your news page, check your articles out. This is real. This is reality. And why should those children suffer? Because the rest of the world says, oh, but what about those poor adults? Shouldn't they have the right to have more children and kill them? Gee, you know? Like, no, it's always been, uh, it's always been that victims are always the ones to be put out. Victims, it's like, victims are just continually re-victimized because the people that are perpetrating the crimes have more rights than the victim, Right? So these people that are killing children, maiming children, raping children, and maybe if they don't kill them, they're, they're, they're damaging these children and getting busted for it. It's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, and they do a little bit of time. They come back out. Everybody feels sorry for the abuser, not for the child. Nobody cares about that child. Oh, they're just, now they're just garbage. Yeah, they just belong over there. Yeah, over in the corner so we don't have to look at them. It just makes me sick. And, and, you know, I mean, what are we going to do? How do we get the world in on this? How do we get the world to say stop child abuse? You know, we get certain groups of people that are willing to stand up and sense and do something about it, and that's great. But then the rest of the world is on, just looking on because they're either abusers, abusing children, or there are other people that really don't care. And that's sad. Because if, if people don't care, they're really, to me, as just as guilty as the people that are doing the abusing because they're turning a blind eye. It's like when you walk by somebody who has been beaten up and is laying there half dead, where's the responsibility to get them help? Some courts are, are doing cases where they're saying, oh, there is no responsibility. You can definitely walk by. You don't have to help somebody. There's no responsibility. And you know what? To me, that's so incredibly wrong and twisted and vulgar and disgusting that it's not even funny. So how anybody can allow a child to be abused and do nothing about it is, I mean, I'm sorry, but this is, this is that's, that's just where, that just shows me that we haven't made, we've actually regressed, like we've degressed. We're no longer debased. We're like, we're like debased a hundred times worse debased than even the most worst people ever in the world. If we have the law saying that we don't have to no longer, there's no no need to help anybody now. Oh no. Where's the where, where's the level of responsibility and care and concern? It's gone. It's gone. And that is a sad, sad thing, my friends. You know what I mean? Like that just it just makes me sick. Well, anyway, my shows are never so much fun when I'm talking about child abuse stuff because it's not a fun subject and I don't usually don't sit around, like I said, talking about what color I'm painting my nails tonight and what I had for supper. Um, it's about abuse and it's about children who are either going to die tonight and if they don't die, they're going to be abused and they're going to suffer uh, torment and torture and they might even grow up like myself and wish they had died. You know, That's really, really sad. Keep that in mind because this world... Is not just a fun place for everybody to have fun. This world is full of pain and misery, all at the hands of somebody who who is causing that misery and that abuse. Right? There's no reason for it. Abuse is a choice. People make a choice to abuse. Abusers have a choice. They don't have to abuse. Right? So stand up for these children out here. Make some noise. Do whatever you can. Get involved with the Innocence Revolution on April 14th. And do it, you know, get involved. Check out Bill Murray's show here, uh, Scan, Stop Child Abuse Now, here on Blog Talk Radio, Bill Murray. Awesome show. And uh, that's a great Blog Talk Radio show. I wish I could be part of it. I, I get home too late in the, in the day to actually be part of it. But um, there's lots of great people out here doing awesome work. So get involved and, you know, don't allow another child around you to be abused. Do not ever keep your eyes open. And look it out for the signs, and you think a child's being abused, you do the right thing, you make a phone call, you call the cops, and you get a police report made, you report it as a crime, because child abuse is a crime, right? Well, talk to you soon.